Let's say, for instance, uh, you recently had Pusha um, on, mm-hmm. the, on the show. Mm-hmm. Great episode yesterday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, you know, how is it different when you have a guest on the show? Guess it's something that's not typically done. Mm-hmm. Uh, how does that change the, the dynamic of the interview, if at all? Well, usually when a guest comes on, they're coming on for a reason. So it kind of, you know, that's kind of what the, the conversation is going to be based around is the guest. But we still... Like I said, we don't do interviews. Like, you know, we're right. selling push it. This isn't an interview. This is a conversation. conversation. You know what I mean? Like we we just kicking it. You know, you could ask us questions. We could, you know, just kick it about whatever the hell you want to talk about. And um Push had reached out because uh, you know, the 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 shop had had came on HBO with Drake and uh LeBron. And uh he reached out that night that it aired and you know, he heard some things, he watched it obviously and said he wanted to clarify a few things. So it was like, okay, cool, no doubt. You know, it made sense. And, um, you know, having guests on, it's a it's a different dynamic because you're bringing somebody else in that's not really a part of what you do on a day to, on a weekly basis. But again, it's essentially just having a conversation. And it's like, we, you know, we, we're well versed in who Pusha is and what he does. You know, we're, we're all fans of, of, of his work. So it was, um, it was interesting to have that sit down and talk with him because we got some questions uh, answered that we, we we wanted and we were looking for. And he exposed some things that we didn't know he was going to expose. And even from there, that just grows the conversation. Like you feed certain things into it and the conversation grows from there. And I think the people enjoyed it. Um, it's, it's, it's mixed. You know, I'm getting a lot of mixed feedback as far as whether people believe it or not or, you know, but the important thing is I think that you got to start the conversation. And I'm, you know, me personally, I'm done with the whole beef thing between right. Drake and Pusha. Like, I could care less about it. Now, to me, it's more about, you know, what happens from here now. You know, can these gentlemen sit down, have a conversation with each other, which I think would be dope. Because I think a lot of it, even in talking to Pusha, was, uh, you know, and you probably know you have misunderstands with people. It's just a lack of communication, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like... I'm sitting there listening to Push, and I'm like, if you and Drake had a, con- in my mind, I'm thinking if this guy and Drake had a conversation, this would be reconciled immediately. Well, well the mo- the main thing I got from that interview because you guys don't do a lot of interviews mm-hmm. um, with other other folks coming in mm-hmm. um, to the show was just like the level of trust that artists have with you guys. Um, well, you, I think it's like that as well. Well, I think it's like what Pusha said. Um, as far as the culture goes, we we know the culture. We right, know what exactly. we're talking about. We're not just sitting there guessing shit. Um, so, I mean, I think it's a level of comfort with, for the guests. Like, they know that they're coming into an environment. Again, we're, we're not grilling you. We're not, you know what I mean? We're not... And it's not an interview. I mean, like, I tell people all the time, like, I don't, I don't ever want to interview anybody. Like, I like just having a conversation. Like, you know what I mean? So, I think the guests that see that, they saw, you know, coming off the chance uh, conversation that we had, and they saw Chance in the light where you typically don't, because like Chance came over, came on the show, he's not promoting anything. Like he doesn't have a project coming, so it's not like he was up there on a press run to promote a project he has coming out. He just really wanted to have a conversation. Mm. So I think people saw that, and that kind of started the snowball effect, and the pusher one now kind of blew the door down and. We've had, you know, a lot of phone calls of people wanting to come on and sit and have conversations now. And whether or not we're going to take them and, and have these conversations is up to us, you know, because we I don't we want to we, we don't want to paint ourselves in as the guest based show now, because essentially it is just our, our personalities right. on the show. But, you know, if it makes sense, I think if it's something that the people want, you know, and they have some questions that they want answered from certain people, I think we'll we'll make, you know, more guests happen. But uh, we're not just jumping out there, just just snatching guests. That's not what we do. So I think that um, you know why I started this podcast to you know interview other famous podcasters because we're going to have the first generation of. Am people. I famous? I don't think I'm famous. Oh, uh, in the world of podcasting, you are. Okay, I'll take that. Yeah. Okay. Um, for sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. If you, I'm listen, I got to ask sometime. I don't know. I don't. I don't well, feel like I'm famous. Well, uh, what was the uh, the famous NBA uh, referee? Oh come on! I'm, I'm drawing a, a blank. The one who cheated, or, or NFL uh, Ed Hockley. Okay, right? mm-hmm. he's a famous NFL referee, right? But he's famous in his in his world, particular field. Got you. 
But I think we're going to see a new wave of people who mm-hmm. are going to grow up wanting to be podcasters. Which I think is dope as fuck. Super dope as fuck. Yeah. So you were mentioning that you don't do interviews. It's more of a conversation. But what's the distinction between giving an interview and a conversation for you? For me, um, I don't like to come into the conversation with any like, you know, I don't want to research any gossipy shit and, you know, ask any questions that's too like intrusive. You know what I mean? It's kind of like just get to know somebody, have a conversation. Like I like I like for it to feel like, you know, it's just where we're somewhere in like a real comfortable setting, whether it's like a living room or, you know, just somewhere at a restaurant and we just having a conversation, man. I don't because when you when you make it feel like an interview. I think people clam up a little bit because they're like, oh, this person going to try to put me out there and have, you know what I'm saying? Like ask me some crazy shit and have me. So it's like, no, let's just have, it's just a free flowing, just relax. Let's just have a conversation. Mm. So I think when you set that environment for people, it makes for a better, you know, situation. People are more comfortable, people more, you know, likely to open up and just be themselves. Like I tell people all the time, like, this is great doing a podcast and, you know, you're a rapper or whoever you are. It's great. Like, you know, that's how you make a living. But it's like, at the end of the day, we're human. Mm. Let's just act human. Let's just have, let's just talk to each other. Like, I don't want to like get into an exposing you or finding out any deep, dark secrets about you. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not into that. You know what I mean? I, I've never been that type of person. I just want to have conversation. Where, where do you guys record? It seems like you guys have changed locations. Like, uh, we 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 because we we record normally in our uh, home studio. It's in uh, it's in Queens, and it's a little. The space is a little small. Okay, but uh, I think even that's dope because it it gives it that real like you know, just that that feeling of comfort, comfort, right? right. It's, Cozy. But uh, for the guest, you know, we try to make it more more space. So we moved uh for the chance uh interview, and then uh, well conversation and we moved for the uh push a conversation just to make it more comfortable for for the for the guests uh you guys just um you know made major waves with your move over to spotify which yeah. big congratulations thank you that's major thank you um you know how has that you know how that move even happened like how, how that even come about persistence man and patience like i said it was uh you know we had some offers early from uh other platforms that you know we kind of walked away from because we felt like it wasn't the right time. And we felt like if, you know, in business, you just got to know, like, if somebody's offering you this, that means that they have a lot more available for you. Right. You know what I mean? So, and knowing that, you have to kind of just pick and choose wisely. Because, you know, you might take this opportunity, but then that one opportunity will stop seven other opportunities from happening. Right. So you just got to be careful and you just got to understand, know your end game and know know what it is that you're trying to do. And once you do that, like, just have fun with it. You know what I mean? Like, I tell people all the time, like, this is fun, man. Like, you know, we like, I could be, you could be doing things that are like real stressful things, like having a podcast and sitting down, kicking it with your friends and, you know, reaping the benefits and now getting paid for it is like some super dope shit. You know what I mean? So it's like. Just have fun with this shit, man. Like, don't don't think too much about it. Like, this is like, this is cool. You know what I mean? It's cool to sit down and kick it with people. Uh, how has the move from Spotify changed the the show and the exposure of the show? Well, I think we reach, uh, you know, more people now. Um, you, I can I can definitely can sense it and feel it because there's people that say things about me online that are like. I'm, I can tell that they just started listening to me. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? Like, oh, you're a yes man. And you just agree with everything Joe says. And I'm like, this person definitely just started watching. <laughs> because if you follow the show, you know me and Joe bump heads a lot. Yeah. And we don't agree a lot of the time. So it's like, welcome to the show. Like, you know what I mean? Well, thank you for the new listen. But I'm definitely not a yes man. So, but, you know, I mean, it, it definitely, Spotify has definitely given us uh, a tremendous platform. And um, we're we're excited, man, to be part of the family now. Because uh, you know, I always say that each uh, we have, we have uh, you know, many people on a uh, particular show. Everyone brings a different vibe. It's almost like being in a an in sync. Mm-hmm. You have the heartthrob, right? You got the person who's the rock, who right? It down, right? Um, like, what are you, Joel, uh, you, Joe, and Rory's role in in, in the show, personality wise? Man, I I mean, if you know, I I, I guess I'm the 
the mysterious God a group, if you if you want to call it that. People seem to give me that moniker, like I'm the mysterious, laid back, cool guy, I guess. But you know, anybody that knows me personally, that they love it because they're like, yo, you're being yourself. This is who, like, I'm not. This is not a script. This is not an act. Like, you know, I see people online saying, oh, you you act too cool for school, and I'm like, bro, if you know me in real life, this is exactly who I've been my entire life. Like, I'm. This is not an act. Like, I really just. I'm a I'm a laid back guy. Like I can turn up. Don't get it twisted. Like I can definitely, you know, be the life of the party and you know things like that. But it's like I'm really just a laid back, cool guy. Like that's just my my natural demeanor. So I think I would be the the cool laid back guy in the group. Uh, Rory would kind of be you know like the hipster, just like uh you know nerd. I want I want to call Rory a nerd, but he would be yeah. you know he would kind of take that 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 role. And you know Joe is the the Bobby Brown of the, of the group. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what the fuck he's gonna do or say. He might not show up for a show. He, you know, what I mean, he might get locked up. Like it's just like that. That would be who Joe is. Yeah.